Okay, I'm at the police station, and uh, very interesting. We're going to find out when I, where I was and all that. And what's your name? David Banks. I'm the supervisor of 911 operations. That's quite a system that you guys have here. It is, yeah. So we're in the second floor, third floor? We are on the third floor of the uh, building. Third floor, and, and you just, now you were downstairs when you first... We did, yeah. We used to work out of the main floor of the building, and about ten years ago we renovated and moved to the third floor to expand the center. And you have now five dispatchers? There's five dispatchers on, on a platoon system. So they work 12-hour shifts, they do two days and two nights, the same rotation as a police officer. I got a police scanner, and my God, I mean, you guys are busy. They are, they're busy all the time. They're, they're like any job, they have their downtime, but uh, majority of the time they're busy. It requires a lot of multitasking, answering different phone calls. As I said earlier, we handle a large amount of 911 calls and administrative calls for the city of Fredericton and outlining areas. And you go how far, Fredericton to? We answer 911 calls from Plast Rock down to Whirl, uh, a, a huge area of the province. Uh, it's almost the size of PEI, our coverage area. And how many calls would you get a night? I mean, I know tonight's a big snowstorm that's coming. You plan to be, be busy? We, it will be busy. If we get a snowstorm around supper time when everybody's on the way home, rush hour traffic, the potential is for a lot of car accidents. Uh, however, there is some advance notice of the storm, so hopefully drivers will be aware and, and slow down a little. But uh, it has the potential to be very busy. They could receive anywhere from 100 to 200 calls in an hour span. Really? Yeah. And, and we all know the snobs in the city can't drive because they got their nose up in the air. Don't answer that. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> this is not CBC or ATV. I, I give my opinion sometime. Uh, how many calls would you get a year? Uh, roughly 35,000 911 calls, uh, dispatch anywhere from 25 to 30 police calls, and uh, various fire departments. We dispatch for four fire departments, and, and they could consume anywhere from eight to 10,000 fire calls a year. How many cruisers, police cruisers, is there on a night shift? It varies on different types of the night, different uh, times of the day even, and different times of the evening and days of the week. Uh, generally speaking, there, there's 12 officers assigned to a shift, and the possibility is there's a lot more out there with different programs. The north side and south side neighborhood action teams, uh, they could be out on patrol, which could increase the complement by anywhere from 6 to 12 more cars. There's a lot of work going on behind the scene that people don't know of. People, uh, I guess until they've actually seen what a communications operator does, they go from emergency calls to non-emergency calls. They field general questions and the next minute later they may take a, a uh, call from a screaming caller who's in the middle of an emergency. Every citizen should have a police scanner. There's a lot of work that's being done. I don't know if every citizen needs a scanner. Um, they just need to realize that it's it's a busy location. There's a, there's a lot more. Our agency tries to help people in every way they can. The police go to every type of call, from a general assistance call to priorities and emergency calls. Uh, the fire department's very busy. They help people in any way they can. Uh, they're always out and about and working. And it's a, it's a busy location. And I will dare to say, from what I've been listening to the police scanner for three or four months, these uh, dispatchers, they're like unsung, unsung heroes. I mean, A lot of times, and, and I guess it's the personality of a dispatcher, a lot of them like that lifestyle. They, they don't uh, want the limelight. They don't, hmm. they don't request the limelight. They, they aren't uh, looking for that hero status but they do take a lot of pride in their job and their work. And they do wonderful work. And they're very professional and uh, willing to help people in any way. I've just seen them there and, uh, you know, I mean, they're, they're good, good attitude, good, good characters. Very good group of staff we have here. They're very dedicated professionals. They really enjoy what they do and that's the main reason they do it. They how, enjoy it. How many is there? There's 22. 22? Yeah. And are they mostly bilingual? Or? Um, we have a few people who are not bilingual. But uh, the majority of our staff are bilingual at this point. Anybody that we hire now is bilingual. But uh, that sure shouldn't be. I mean, uh, anybody could translate, understand English. But that's another story for another day. Listen, David, thank you very much. No that, problem. That was a great tour. Okay, Charles. Thanks. No problem.